Duncan, the president and CEO of Leadership Greater Washington. I want to welcome you to another one of our frontline conversations. And this is a 35th anniversary special. We're taking time this year to talk to leaders of the organization throughout the years. And we're so fortunate to have with us Tim Kine from the class of 98, who was my predecessor as president and CEO. So Tim, welcome to you. Good morning. Uh, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. Just feeling so grateful to be here. Happy birthday, LGW. Uh, it's truly amazing. 35, Doug, who would have thought that we, we you know, just it's uh, the, the leaders had a vision, our founders had a vision, and here we are today. And what, we have, what, 2,000 some members that have gone through? We've got a lot of people have gone through. It's hard to believe. It's a couple thousand believe. over the years. So. It's hard Plus, to uh, we've got a lot of, of young kids who've gone through the, the youth program uh, and the um, in the Rising Leaders program as well. So we're very, very proud of all those programs. Absolutely. Well, when you think about every part of our community across Greater Washington and beyond, we've, our members, our leaders, our youth have had a, a role in that. It's really extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about the history. How did you get involved with Leadership Greater Washington? Well, Doug, were, you, I, were you in the class and then became president CEO, or were you uh, president CEO when you were in the class? Uh, yes, no, I, I went through uh, the class of 98. Hello to my wonderful classmates out there. Um, it was a, a transformative experience. But no, I knew about uh, Leadership Greater Washington when I was a staff member of the Board of Trade, one of our you know, founding organizations. And I was in the Communications Bureau and was a reporter essentially and covered Leadership Washington then and took photos and wrote it up for the member newsletter, never thinking that I would go through A and B, that I would have the honor of living, you know, living and leading it for almost 15 years. So when, so you went through your class of 98, your kind of class, and then when did you decide to apply to become president and CEO? How did that happen? Uh, so I had uh, you know, completed the program, loved every minute. I, I was the executive director of a group called the Washington Regional Alcohol Program, yep. despite yep. drunk driving. And it was just impactful immediately to that organization. And out of the blue, uh, Alex Orfinger called and said, Tim, I've got your next job. Uh, Doug, I, I had not put my resume together. I was not looking. But as soon as I got that call, I, I have to be honest, I knew I was going to get the job because immediately all these, I had been involved on committees and all with LGW and immediately ideas came to me on what we could do to, to take this organization to the next level. And fast forward, I had the, had the interview and the rest is history. So it, my first class uh, was the class of 2000. So I, I, I came on board in the fall of 99, just when they started and was able to go through with them uh, with 2000. So grateful that I've been part of uh, from 2000 to 2014, in addition to my class. So when they hired me, they, my first day on the job was in my opening retreat for my class. They said, right. you're going to go through the program right, and right. start your job here by being in the program. So which I thought was a, uh, it was a great thing, actually. It was really nice that they, the board did that and said they wanted me to go through it. And, and uh, it was really very special. I got a very special class. So Absolutely. I'm upset. Well, you are you are a, a triple type A person, Doug. The fact that you yeah. could lead the organization and go through it at the same time, <laughs> my hat's off to you. But but you could also then firsthand experience talk about the transformative power, how it changes connections and relationships, and and really speaking from experience. So I'm glad that that uh, you you hopped in <laughs> full full force, full body. So how did LGW transform you? How, how, you've talked about that a little bit, but. Well I, well, I just think that um, I, I think as a leader, uh, it allowed me to have open, frank conversations um, about uh, things in a trusted environment. I was willing to grow and change things. I really think I've, I found my leadership voice, Doug, in a way that I, I never would have thought of. I, um, I've always been, I think, a visionary leader, an intentional leader, a lot of thought behind things, uh, and to have LGW in a way to unleash that in me uh, was really extraordinary in ways that I would have never thought. So which is your, besides 98, which is your favorite class? <laughs> uh, I love all of our children, Doug. Come on, <laughs> Isn't, come that, on. Isn't that what a parent says? <laughs> well, well, I, I have to say, that, you know, there were parts of different classes that stuck with me, but I would say the first class 
um, that I went through as leader, the, the class of 2000. Again, it was a chance for me to really uh, bring an organization and that was kind of a diamond in the rough and really kind of make it sparkle under that class. And then I would say the last class that I was uh, CEO, President CEO was 2014. And so that has a special place for me, uh, especially because I have to tell you, um, the pastor of my church, Reverend Sylvia Sumter, <laughs> was in that uh, class. And so it really, um, you could not have scripted a better a better way for uh, for my leadership experience to end with LGW. It was really uh, magical. You couldn't make it up. These classes are really special. They, they uh, What I love about it is you get to, as you said, sort of mold something, but you get to watch a group of people come together who don't know each other. Absolutely. And each class has its own personality, but they all yes. they, they come together and they form this this unit, this this ball of energy, actually, in terms of doing things. It's it's fascinating to watch. It's a lot of fun. It is. Well, well, one of the joys that I always had, Doug, that I'm sure you can relate to is, you know, you read about these people, that the folks that apply or we recruit or we invite or, you know, we coerce to being part of the organization. You know, you might read about them uh, in the paper, see them on the news, you know, follow them in many ways. And then to see them come together uh, during the orientation and then the opening retreat where they put their titles and their things uh, aside and come as human beings and to see how quickly folks connect. Uh, it's just, there's something extraordinary uh, that happens that then sets a tone for the rest of the year and their lifelong, hopefully, engagement with LGW. Yeah, it's, there's something magical about it. Like this. I, I know that can sound weird to people, but it really is. It's really something different uh, right. as you go through it. And, and as I said, classes are each class has a different personality. But but for right. me, the class of 2019, 2015, of course, is the greatest class ever. But <laughs> 2019 was a very special class. Their opening retreat was like a closing retreat. That's how right. quickly they bonded. It was just fascinating to watch. Absolutely, Doug. Absolutely. Well, what I also loved were people, you know, there's such a, uh, people just want to get in the program. They hear about the magic. They understand about the impact. And for folks that didn't get in, I would often reach out to them, you know, uh, they might have questions. And I, 10 times out of 10, Doug, I would say, if you will get in the right class at the right time. And every single person that kind of dusted off their ego, reapplied, always got in the right class and said, Tim, you were absolutely right. They were they were with the right people or or life events happened for them where they needed to be there in LGW at that time. That's a great way to put it. I, I, I never heard that before, but that's a great way to put it. And it is true. We've had people who, who've who applied and, and applied for another class and, and they're very thankful they got in the class they did. They just thought it was a class meant for them. So. Abs absolutely, absolutely. And so I think you know, that, that the challenge, uh, it, which is a, bl a blessing is great for LGW is that so many people want to get in, but we want to make sure, as you know, that the class has a lot of thoughtfulness and intentionality and strategy behind the group that will go through at that particular time. And, and yeah, I love that when people said, I'm so glad I didn't get into this because here I'm with my people now. So tell us about some of your favorite memories of LGW. What, what uh, during a class year or afterwards, and what are the things that kind of you look back on it. What was the what was the thing you liked best about about being uh, president CEO? Well, well, uh, Doug, I, I like you. I'm about people. I mean, I just love to bring people together and to think that this amazing amazing thing called LGW brought people that didn't know each other together that are now working together that are changing the community. They're building business. They're they're impacting each other's personal lives. I mean, to me, that was such a, an exciting thing. I it, it never ever got old to see or hear from folks to say, you know what? I would have never met this person and now look what we're doing together. Uh, it's the, the, the connections, the trust that's built, it, it really is extraordinary. I, I do have a, a story that comes to mind when, when we celebrated our 20th, Doug, um, we had so many students apply to Youth Leadership Washington. And we decided because we had the funding from Freddie Mac and others that we would do two classes. And so we did two classes, maybe they were 40 each, simultaneously. And um, before we got started, an LGW member came forward and said, Tim, my son would never get in youth leadership, but can he get in? He needs this. And so I said, of course. So he got in the program and to see him go through this young man, go through and be the darling of the class, to learn all that he did and to see his relationship change with his mother, the, the LGW member, 
it was really, uh, it, it, it was something I think about all the time that would have, that it, it changed that family's life. That's such a great story. That's really nice to hear. And it does, you, you see in the, in the youth program, you do see them sort of change and evolve. And, and what, we're, what we're trying to do now is to make sure we get youth who are leaders in their, in their lives, but also yes. youth who need that extra step, need, can learn from the leaders to become leaders. A absolutely. It's a great mix of people to bring in. Absolutely, Doug. I think that, that then you're unleashing, or LGW and the program is unleashing something inside of these young people that they didn't know. Well, maybe they didn't think I was a leader because I'm not president of the student council or I'm not a straight A student, but they get in and see the similarities. And, and what I loved was probably the same thing with the rising leaders and the signature program of youth leadership is to bring people that outwardly might look very different in terms of gender, race, background, all those things, but then to see how much we are all alike. And I think the youth leadership program, many students, I remember some in parts of the community had never been out of their respective community. And to see how they blossomed and grew, but also the similarities that they had with, with folks from a charter school, a public school, a private school was really, um, again, transformative for those young people. Well, that's what everybody says about LGW. You'll, you'll meet people that you never would have met except for LGW, and it's so true. A absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we get siloed, Doug. We are focused on what we're doing every day, and and folks who often say, "Well, I don't have time for uh, uh, leadership greater Washington." We're like, "You're the perfect person to go through," and and it, it as you know, it pulls people out of their daily life and gets them connected with folks that they would never encounter for whatever reason. And that's what I think is so extraordinary to see then folks working together because of the connection, the trust, the the um, the bond that that LGW creates and and continues to foster after the signature program. And, and what was nice for me, and I agree with you that that the friendships, the relationships, are the most they're the best thing about this job. And, and I always yes. say that every day I'm talking to a member who's doing something good in the community. It's just absolutely very inspiring, very uplifting. You know, it really gives you gives you motive to just keep pushing away and and keep uh, bringing people together. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, and I, I'm always amazed uh, at the resourcefulness, the creativity, the innovation of folks that are on the front lines. I, I have a, I have a, a bias, maybe a spin. Uh, my heart is with nonprofit folks because that's my background and training. And to see folks um, really touching communities in a powerful way on the front line and then come through LGW and have their classes rally around them to support their mission is really, really extraordinary. We just, we just uh, wrote up a great story, Jay Chepley, who's our marketing communications manager, just wrote up a great story on the fishing school. Yes. LGW's role with them. And, Absolutely. And Tom Lewis just passed away, but it's uh, uh, it's an incredible story. It incredible is. Story. I'm, I'm, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear that he had passed away. I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I hope I, hope I didn't misspeak there. No, that's okay. I mean, I, I uh, you know, I, 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 I have, a lot of great feelings for him. Again, the fishing school is a great example of, of I would say, uh, a nonprofit. As you know, Tom was a police officer. He was not a nonprofit executive. He had this idea of helping, you know, African American young men and boys in a part of the community that there was a need. And then for him to go through LGW, I put what he was class of ninety seven, I believe, and to see his classmates rally around him to fund it, to serve on the board, to really get engaged. Uh, LGW through that connection changed the course of the fishing school forever. And that's so if I misspoke on that someone, please let me know. I, <laughs> I apologize for that. So February 23rd. Yes, he did. He passed away February 23rd. So okay. just a little over a month ago. Okay. Well, well, we so have thank another you for that. Yeah, we know we have another person uh, up up there keeping a good yep. eye on, on yep. LGW. Yeah, he extraordinary person, huge heart. So um, again, we, we send well wishes and sympathy to his family. And what a legacy, what a legacy that he created. Again, LGW had a huge role in transforming that organization. Yep, yep. And he's very proud of that. He, he, I've, I've had, I had several conversations with him and he's very proud of the fact that LGW rallied behind him and really helped transform his organization. He's, Absolutely. He, and, he really got a benefit from, from Leadership Greater Washington. Without a question, Doug, without a question. And, and for him, 
you know, to get out of his daily worry when he was going through LGW, worrying about running a nonprofit and funders and staffing and supporting the young men, for him to get out to be with, with folks, I know, based on my experience, and I, I'm sure you feel the same way as do members, getting out, getting refreshed, learning new things, site visits, exercises, you know, things that got your mind thinking in a different way. I know when I ran my organization, Washington Regional Health Program, I went as back as a better leader because I had now a chance to get out of uh, the daily, uh, you know, having my head down focused on what needed to be done to make that organization run well. You know, another great story is the story of Bright Beginnings, which was started early on with um, the Junior League and LGW. I mean, Marty, uh, Marty Kendrick, Otters Hampshire Cowan, people yeah. like that really put that together. And that's such a, and Marla Dean, the head of that now, just went through our class. So it's a I love it. wonderful organization doing wonderful things. So. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, people, people, Doug, you know, LGW is about powerful relationships. And so the folks at Bright Beginnings, uh, in the class, they might not have known about it, but because they trusted the folks like, you know, artists or Bev Silverberg or others that were involved, you need to get involved with this. Then fast forward, they step up in a way that really makes an impact. And I love that all these years later, something that was created from Leadership Washington, Leadership Greater Washington is now in existence and thriving and touching lives. Uh, it's, it, yeah, yeah it's, it's thrilling. It really is thrilling. Well, let's, uh, let's change subject here for a second. And, and I wanna talk about what you're doing now. Great. Um, you're off on some great adventures uh, that I see. And I think you and Jeff Franco are doing something together. And, and so, <laughs> Give us, give us an update. What's, ha what's happened? Absolutely. Well, Doug, LGW is the gift that keeps giving. It really <laughs> is. Uh, you know, it's, you know, the beauty is that, you know, whether you're in the first class or the most recent class, you have this amazing connection. Um, and so Doug, uh, Jeff Franco and I, as you say, um, he and I met through LGW. He uh, went through the class of 2010 and uh, we become friends and colleagues. We both have our own consulting business. So most of my clients, Doug, I do a lot of coaching and strategic planning and team building, all the things that, that uh, bring people together. Um, most of my clients are from Leadership Greater Washington because you know, I, I think you know, they, they, they know that uh, I've got you know, trust and integrity and I'm gonna deliver. Well, fast forward, Jeff and I have become good friends and we've worked together informally. We said, you know, now it's time to do this. And so we, uh, we've launched a, a cohort group for nonprofit executive directors that starts tomorrow. And because Doug, because he and I, Jeff knew, we know each other, we've worked with each other, we knew we, we could really impact, based on our experience, the nonprofit leaders that we're going to start working with tomorrow. Really excited about that. So what are you doing with the nonprofit leaders? What's the, what's the program? Uh, so it's called the Transformation Leadership Institute. And we'll have, uh, you know, ideally 10 to 15 leaders by design small. That'll be a six month cohort journey with us. So there's gonna be leadership training, leadership coaching, uh, mentoring, uh, and creating those relationships amongst those, uh, the folks participating. And so this is one of the blessings of COVID, Doug, that, that because it's all gonna be virtual. Um, so we have leaders, some from greater Washington and some from outside the community that are, again, are gonna connect uh, in this really uh, strategic way. So folks, like LGW will meet, but then the coaching and mentoring part is something that's a different twist that they might not get up. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jeff put in, just put in the chat uh, the uh, webpage for uh, <laughs> what you're doing, so there you go. You can see why I love working with them. That's so great. That's so great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So again, it's been really uh, it, it, just a great, great journey. Um, uh, you know, and I, I just wanna show like a, one of the things that comes up for me is I have a partnership with Goodwill of Greater Washington. Uh, many of their leaders, over there have gone through LGW. Um, and I think like Michael Frome, you know, has become a good friend, but they, uh, because I have this artistic background where I do kind of a trash to treasure kind of thing, I now partner with Goodwill and I've done team building through them uh, and others where it's kind of, it's almost in a way like the arts day, you know, it's kind of part art, part coaching, part visioning, but under the auspices of what we call upcycling, which is, uh, you know, kind of, taking, you know, trash to treasure kind of thing, something that you might pick up at Goodwill that will transform into something beautiful, which is kind of a metaphor. Um, and so I have this uh, great partnership with them. And uh, yeah, every, every week I'm doing a blog for them. Um, again, it's just really, I, I, as a direct result of 
of Leadership Greater Washington, I have this really kind of cool part of my world that I would have never thought about. And how did COVID affect all that? What, what, what happened when, what happened to you personally when everything shut down and people were doing everything virtual and nobody was meeting or whatever? I mean, how, how did that impact you? Uh, well, well, it's funny, Doug. Uh, so with my coaching clients, I always want to meet one-on-one -on -one with folks. Um, and because of COVID and Zoom, I went from having my focus of clients on Greater Washington, now I have clients from across the, the country and Canada. So I guess I've gone global, Doug, thanks to, uh, thanks to COVID. Um, and even uh, initially some of the team building and, and all that was a little bit slower to come on, but now people got used to doing things by Zoom. And so uh, that's been really grateful. Again, I have clients outside of the greater Washington area because of technology that again, I, I would have never thought about doing, but I'm grateful for that. Certainly. Yeah, when we went virtual, it was, what was great for us was one the speed with, with which we could do things. Right. So instead of trying to find a, come up with an idea for a program, find a place to hold it, find a sponsor for it, put out invitations, it was let's just do it on Zoom. And, and within you know, days, you could turn something around and, and get it out there. But the other thing was that we've got members now participating who don't live in Washington. Absolutely. I mean, it's, yep. From around the world, people are tuning into the programs that we're offering, coming to our member lunches or member dinners, things like that. It's, it's just great to see. Exactly. Well, well, that's, again, like that's where the blessing is from all this is that folks uh, feel a strong connection to LGW, but maybe have been out of the area that would not come to event. And now they can, they can literally zoom in and join us from wherever. I think um, I had a member dinner with Michael Rogers and Shirley Edwards, who were both amazing chairs w when I was uh, present CEO. And I think there was someone that joined us from uh, like Chicago or California. I can't remember who it was, but again, it was, they, they felt so strongly about their connection to LGW that they were able to just zip in and, and keep connected, which was really, really fun. I mean, a couple of people that have really jumped out to me are Karen Kalish and Timothy Johnson, who one's in Kentucky, one's in St. Louis. And, and it, it's, like, it's like they never left. I mean, they're just part of the family now in terms Absolutely. of their involvement with us. And, and, and the, the, they've got great ideas, great thoughts. And, and I'm really, really glad that we've got them uh, working with us doing things with us. So. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I, I love that, uh, you know, that, that, uh, you know, with folks, um, you don't have to show up uh, in the same way to really stay engaged, which is really, really, you know, again, that's kind of the blessing of COVID, certainly. So Linda Cassell put in, it's not a question, but she uh, put in a comment of uh, her favorite LGW memory, and she said it was her entire class year, class of <laughs> 98. So you, you got a few of your class members on the call today. So. Right, right. Well, with Linda, you know, Doug, I, I, I kind of thinking about the call today, I, I feel like I could spend the whole time just thanking people, you know, for all that they did for me when I was in the program, when I was leading the organization. And now and Linda is certainly one of them. You know, she has been, you know, remarkable, at keeping our class connected, um, sharing the highlights of what's happening at LGW and making sure that that we're still connected. And yeah, and she, I, um, I remember, I, I hope I'm not going to embarrass Linda, but you know, when you build, I'm an entrepreneur now, when you build a business, you're not always sure where the next client's going to come from. And I had a moment of panic and out of the blue, Linda called and said, Tim, I, I can't service this client. Can you help me out? So boom, right away, you know. Uh, um, uh, I mean, you, my, you only had one moment of panic. When <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly, exactly. exactly. Um, but, but yeah, and I think that, um, you know, like I said, there's just so, so many folks. I, I feel like, you know, every board chair that I worked with, Doug, what I'm always amazed, and I, I would love to hear your perspective on it, LGW always had the perfect chair, the right leader to chair the organization at the time. And I think whatever we were going through, it was really kind of extraordinary that that person was the one that was leading it. The first chair that I worked with was Howard Ross that is still incredibly involved. Well, you know, he was our co-leader for the class of 98. So when I, you know, was hired as present CEO, because we already knew each other, Doug, we could hit the ground running working together as CEO and board chair. And so we didn't have to get to know each other. We already cared about each other. We respected each other. And so we could really work very quickly to transform the organization. And then I think with Maxine Baker, you know, she went through 99. 
She was the head of Freddie Mac Foundation. She, she came in at the right time when, again, there were a lot of changes happening and brought all these amazing um, behind the scenes uh, growth for me. But Michael Rogers, um, during our 20th, he leveraged all his relationships to make sure that that was a banner year for us. Shirley Edwards, oh my gosh, I could, Doug, I could go on and on and on. Faye Coleman, when we were moving offices, Faye Coleman was our chair at the time and her business had just gone through a similar experience. So here we leveraged all her knowledge and she guided the board and the organization at the right and perfect time. Again, I could go, uh, like I said, I could spend the whole time Doug, thanking you know, folks <laughs> um, who were just extraordinary stepping up when we needed them to step up. I like the way you put it where the, the chairs are the right person at the right time, because that's what how Barbara Davis Blum described us. Yep. That you were president CEO at the right time for the organization, and I came in at the right time for the organization, and frankly, the right time for me. So it's really, and, and I do agree with you about the chairs. I mean, sort of thinking back now, uh, Mary Abjad, Joe Budzinski, uh, uh, Picky oh, Mayfield, Bahan, now Rachel Cronowitz coming up. Right. They've all done their own special thing, but it really was. They did it when we were ready to do it. Absolutely. And if you had flipped the order, I don't think we would have been as successful. It's really, it's fascinating. Right, right. I, I, well, I had the joy of working with, you know, uh, you know, I guess, you know, 14 leaders in that position. Um, Michael Rogers was the first one that did two years. I think, I think Maxine, we enlisted her. She, she maybe was two years one day. <laughs> so, but, um, but yeah, it just really was uh, quite extraordinary. Um, I do have to say that, you know, the one thing, uh, I'm very jealous that you got to work with Pinky as board chair. Uh, <laughs> she was such a huge champion for the, for me as a leader and for our staff and really supporting that, you know, and she, she was willing to put hard conversations on the table that needed to be had with the board. Um, so, and, you know, Mahan and I are classmates. So, so um, I look forward to getting to know Rachel in that way. But again, I, I, I love that you echo that because that's what we've seen time and time again. So Pinky was, she and I knew each other. I mean, we were through the years, but didn't really, you know, we weren't friends or anything. We never really had right. in-depth conversations. So we sort of came into it um, not really not really knowing each other that well, not knowing what to expect. And I'll tell you, what came out of it for me was she became a mentor of mine. Here I am, you know, I'm in my 60s, I've been kind of executive for a number of years, the mayor, done, done a bunch of stuff, thinking I don't really need, you know, I don't need to look anymore for this. I've got stuff I can teach. <laughs> right. And just out of the blue, I just, I would watch her and learn from her every day. I mean, she's an yes. incredible, incredible woman, incredible person. And I'm, I am so grateful that I got to be there when she was chair because she really did so much for the organization and so much for me personally. Right, right. I, again, the, the right person at the right time, Doug. And yeah. I think, you know, how much she loved the organization and just just her, um, you know, her brilliance as a leader and, and vision and support of you to make sure that, you know, that, that with my tenure out and your tenure in that LGW continues to go upward. Again, I, Doug, for, from a member, speaking as a member of the 98, not as your, your colleague, as a fellow colleague, you are the right leader at the right time, Doug, that I, I had the joy of, of pulling it together in my own way. And now you're doing it where, where our legacy as a class of 98, you know, and, and others will continue to be involved in a long, long time because of the value you're adding to our overall experience. It's a blast. I really, really enjoy this. And I, I've said this a couple of times before, but I am surprised. I guess people didn't know you. A lot of people thought when I was hired that I'd be there for like a year, year and a half. And, you know, I was just using it to move on to something else. And, and I, I was looking for something where I could just settle in and, mm -hmm. you know, devote myself to it. And, and I, I always see myself as a community builder. That's what I sort of do, make people proud of where they live and work. Right. And this, this role here fit like a glove on me. I That's really, was, really just love the people, love the organization, love the mission. And, and every, you know, every class it's new, there's something different, you know, so you're mm -hmm. not, you know, mm -hmm. you're always adapting and innovating and, and then with the COVID stuff, what we had to do with that, I, I just, it really challenges you. Uh, right. And it's just, it's just, it's a thrill. It really right. is a thrill to be president CEO of Lucia Greater Washington. Yeah. Right. 
I, I can't say that enough. It's just right. a lot of fun. And I hope the organization feels the same way about me, but it really was a great fit for me. So. Well, speaking on behalf of the membership, we do, Doug. <laughs> we do. You know, we're just so proud of what you and your team and the board are doing. And, and again, like to me, I, I feel grateful that I, I was able to come in and I saw this as a diamond in the rough. And now you have taken it to a whole new stratosphere because of, of all that you bring as an individual, as a leader to the table. So again, I, 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 I had the joy of following some, some uh, heartfelt, dedicated you know, executive directors or staff members. And, and, uh, and, and now to see where you, you're taking it um, is just really, uh, I, I feel like a proud papa, even though I, we're, I, guess, I guess we're about the same age. I feel like a proud papa seeing, seeing you know, what you're doing with, uh, with the organization today and your vision of where it's going tomorrow is just really, um, uh, yeah, you know, you, you said it, 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 LGW is not a job, Doug. It, there's something that it, it gets into your heart and your soul and your DNA. And so to see what you're doing with it is really, uh, it's just a joyful experience. Well, what struck me right away was, you know, again, coming from Montgomery County, knowing a lot of people, a lot of people being in the region as an elected official for, gosh, about 25 years, again, sort of getting around. I, I knew it, know a ton of people. But what struck me when I came was, how few people I actually did know because I was being this whole new cast of characters through Leadership Greater Washington, which was yes. just astounding to me. I mean, it really, it really talks about the depth of our region and, and the talent that's there and, and what's available to us and, and how we can work to make it better for everyone. It's just, right. it's wonderful. Right. Well, I think it, you already love the, the, the community and it just deepens your passion for this, you know, amazing place that we live in. You know, we are, we are so fortunate with so many great resources and uh, schools and nonprofits and just everything that's happening here. Really, I, I couldn't be happier living in this community and Leadership Greater Washington deep in my love for it. And I'm sure it has for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it really, it just makes you want to work that much harder to, to make things happen here, to, to bridge those differences that we have right. across the region. And there's a lot of them. There's a lot, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Well, that's why I think, you know, you, you bring a whole different perspective to the organization from Montgomery County, from your background, you know, as an elected official, you brought a whole other set of perspectives that, that impact the organization in a really exciting way. And I, I remember your early days uh, before COVID, you would take Metro from your home to the LGW offices. And I thought that is the coolest thing. You know, that's a regional organization right there in action. I haven't taken Metro in about a year. I'm sorry to say, but wow. yeah, well, actually, I, I will say the first couple of years of it was rough. Metro was not in good shape. Right. And right. I'll, I'll give Paul Wiedefeld and his crew a lot of credit because it just turned around. I mean, every trip for a while, every day, every trip, you stop mm -hmm. somewhere in a tunnel in the dark, having no clue what was going on. It just right. anyway, anyway, with right. this, I don't mean to bash Metro because they, they, you turn around, they're doing great things. Right, uh, right. Since he right. came in and it fixed it out. But, right. but yeah, I mean, that's part of the experience, I think. And right. I always had a, you know, it's the first time I ever worked in downtown DC mm -hmm. on, a, on a regular basis. I mean, I worked for at t for a number of years and would occasionally go into DC to offices there, but, but it was always sort of, a, I was always around the beltway somewhere. And it's just, right. it's just a great experience coming to DC every day and seeing the, the vibrancy that's there, which I hope returns very soon. Right, we're right. We're all vaccinated, so. Well, and Doug, you're a living example of, of what LGW is all about, is I think about how, because we're a regional organization, like the elected officials that would go through, um, you know, and rather than just focusing on, for example, Prince George's County, they're getting out to places that they might not know about in the district in Virginia and engaging with folks that um, they would never have conversations with because, well, why should I care about Northern Virginia? Well, it impacts the region. They already know that, but you know what I'm saying is that is that there's something that happens when someone uh, in an elected office goes through. And I think our uh, DC, I'm a DC resident here in Brookland, uh, our wonderful mayor, Muriel Bowser, went through the class of 2013. And what live I live in the about, dream, 2013. Live, live in the dream. What I love, Doug, about her story is that she ran for mayor after she went through the program. And her classmates who did not live in DC hosted events to, to raise funds, to support her, to connect her. So it was a truly regional uh, cadre of folks, of leaders that supported the mayor of DC. And 
it would not have happened without the framework That's without right. this amazing thing called Leadership Greater Washington. We That's know right. it. We know it. And I would imagine, I predict, Doug, I don't know because I haven't talked to uh, Mayor Bowser in a, a moment. I'm sure she taps into people in her class to this day to give her advice and insights or to, to share what she's going through. I'm sure that she taps into- Oh, she does. Yep. Absolutely, she does. Yes. Yep. Yes, I, I know that for a fact. Yeah. There you she's go. She's still in touch with a lot of her classmates, which is great. Great for them, great for her. Absolutely. It's a win-win. And, and those people might- I know might not be connected to her in the same way without her experience going through the class year. And that's what I, what's, that's what I like. And I'll tell you what's great for her. And this is something I've, I've mentioned. So when you're the top elected official, it, it can get lonely. You're, you've got mm -hmm. a lot of people who report to you, a lot of people who want something from you, whatever. Right. Just, you know, you're never sure if when somebody's giving you advice, do they, are they doing it because they think it's what you want to hear? Are they doing it because they want to get mm -hmm. something out of it? Mm -hmm. And what my mind trust, now this is years later, but when I had a mind trust with LGW, I said, my gosh, I wish I had this when I was county executive. People who just care about me or give me advice because they think it's the best thing for me. And right. I think that's what Mayor Bowser has now with her, with her classmates. People Absolutely. She trust will shoot straight with her, give her great advice. Absolutely. And, um, Absolutely. Well, I would think like- And it's like, a great advantage for her. It's a great, I, I, Robert White on the DC Council is, is in the class now. And that's the one thing I told him he should do is, is to yep. create a sort of mind trust for his office uh, to get advice from people that he can rely on. You know, it's like a kitchen cabinet, but I think it is a much deeper level. Yeah, well, absolutely. I think that's that's the beauty of, of the way that LGW, the founders set it up for us is that with the opening retreat, at, at you're leaving your title at the door and you're coming as a human being. And so Robert or Mir Bowser or others get a chance to leave all that behind. Or I think about like, like Sonia McCormick from you know PNC, how many people ask her for money every day? And when she went through the program, she could leave that behind and just show up as Sonia and enjoy the, the experience, learn from it and connect with other people um, in, in a whole different way. Or any, any funder or anyone, like I said, someone wants something from somebody, and at LGW can leave that all behind and just come and be, you know, a real person for a period of time, which is, again, that's part of the transformation that happens. Yeah, and Sonia was on the board when I came in and, and, and termed out. I mean, she couldn't be on the board anymore. And I really miss her. I miss her every day. She's, a, she's just a great lady. So, yeah. Well, we're starting to get some comments. Uh, Mahan Tavakoli, our chair, is putting in comments about the class of 98, the iconic <laughs> class, the best class ever, how great it is. And, and, right. Uh, He's calling on some other classmates to do the same. So I just want to give him a there's, shout out. There's Doug, there's no competition about who the best <laughs> class is, right? <laughs> but uh, well, and even that, I, I think how blessed, how fortunate I've been to, to be on this journey uh, with the class of 98 all these years. And we've had, you know, uh, some of our class members pass away, other people pass away. And there's this, this amazing connection that we have all these years later. And so again, Mahan, you're the right leader at the right time for this organization with what, a couple of months left before uh, <laughs> before he becomes a past chair? Three months, but who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> and Pinky exactly. gave out a real nice shout out to you and me, how she's humbled to have worked with both of us. So we, uh, I adore Pinky, I really do. Anyway, but, but all my chairs, you're right. I mean, they just, every one of them taught me something made me focus on something that I, you know, made me improve in certain ways. Not, you know, they didn't sit there and say, you need to do it, but just by watching them, working with them, learning from them, right. uh, every one of them, uh, right. Mary, right. Joe, Pinky, uh, Mahan, and, and now I'm looking, really looking forward to Rachel coming. So. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Well, well, and like Julie, well, and Julie Rosenthal, it's just an interesting story there. You know, I've known her for, gosh, you know, 25 years. She, she was on the board of the organization, the Washington Regional Alcohol Program that I led before LGW. And as a fluke, we just happened to run into each other on the street. She's like, what are you doing these days? I'm like, I'm leading LGW. The application is due in two days. She, you know, turned it around, made it happen, got into the class and then became, you know, years later, the board chair. And so it was really exciting to see her grow as a leader and all the things that, that she did in many different levels. So, you know, always, always grateful for her you know, and Mary Abijay, I remember when she did the Myers-Briggs uh, for our team and how her guiding through that us changed the relationship that we had with the team members. I think like Mayoshi Moses, uh, you know, was, was my COO when I was there. And just having Mary guide us through that exercise changed 
the way we communicated with each other and the way that we could, again, continue to raise LGW to new heights. Yeah. yeah. I want to talk about your class. So I was at your, the 20th, yeah, 20th anniversary for your class in 2018. Mm -hmm. And you all got together as a great party, but you put together this book, this booklet. Um, and I wonder if you could talk about that. Some, it was so, it was so amazing. I wanted to take it and put it on our website and share it. And, and people felt it was a little too personal, but <laughs> right, talk about right. what your class did with, for their 20th anniversary. Well, uh, Gene Sachs uh, hosted us yeah. um, and just had a great time. And what I loved about that, Doug, was we had people came out that we had not seen in a number of years. And it was like it had only been a few moments since we had our closing retreat. It, you know, the memories are there. But what, uh, what you're talking about, Doug, it was almost like a, a, a mini class yearbook. So each person was asked to write about what they're up to now, what their experience with, was like with LGW, and then... Um, I can't remember if someone pulled it together, but it was really, it was this great memento to, to read back like, you know, it was really kind of a journey uh, to think about where we were then and where we are now. Um, it was just really, uh, really kind was, of a special memento. It was very moving. Yeah. Was, was Glenn Howard the one I think who pulled it together? Uh, probably that was, you I know, think he, he was, he's, I think he he's was. Been, yeah. yeah, yeah, that sounds, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah, again, Glenn, Glenn, by the way, uh, hi Glenn, if you're out there, he was my uh, opening retreat. Um, roommate and uh no kidding yeah yeah and 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 i have to tell doug i'm a total nerd i go to bed early and so here we are at the at the opening retreat you know and they do all the, you know people are enjoying the chance of being together and you know i snuck out and went to bed and and then he comes in at, i don't know like 11 o'clock ready to bond with me you know ready to have roomy conversations <laughs> but even, well, even, the, go ahead i'm sorry just one of the things I appreciate my issue for is that when I was, as I said, hired first day on the job was at my opening retreat. They gave me a single room. I didn't have a roommate. So I was, I was very thankful for that. I got to say. Oh, okay. Okay. And, okay. and because of COVID, we're starting to shift away from that some little bit. So right, anyway. Right, anyway. right. Well, it was always just a funny experience to hear uh, people's discomfort with having a roommate that they didn't know. And, um, and then again, Doug, so many times people came back and said, you know what, the best thing that happened was Glenn Howard and I were roommates or, yeah, you know, this yeah. person, you know, we had this, who would have thought, you know, that we had these in common. And so it really was, again, part of the connecting folks in a way that um, I think intentionally that what I'm proud about LGW is, is I don't know if folks realize all the intention and thought that goes into every single activity that we do, that a member dinner just doesn't happen. Folks are, you know, crafted in a way, the mind trust, which was something that I'm, I, I feel like I'm proud of one of my legacies that when that was introduced, but, but there was a lot of thought behind every single person that went into a respective mind trust group um, because we wanted to make sure that it was impactful as possible. And so, yeah, to hear, to hear those sorts of, of connections happening um, e even amongst roommates was really, really, really quite fun. But I, the one thing we didn't do, Doug, is we should have kept a list of excuses when people said why they couldn't have a roommate. <laughs> you know, it was like the dog ate my homework. Oh yeah, amazing, amazing. Uh, well, the mind trust, we've now started what we call cross-class mind trust. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where we've put the call, we have about 30 to 40 members who are uh, doing mind trust with non-members of the class. Some of them didn't have a mind trust in their in their when, in their class because they weren't around then. Right. Uh, some of them um, said, "I want to, you know, try something different, and get to know other people." So those are working well too. So thank you for that. That's, that's a great. major. If that's your legacy, that's a major legacy to LDW. That's a huge, well, well, huge improvement well, to the organization. Well, you know, one of the things that you know what, what, with the earlier classes, Doug, including my class, was that you know they want to break up the big group of 50 to 60 people. And so we, at the time, did community service projects. And so that was the way that we connected in a smaller way. But I remember at the closing retreat, at least for my class, you had to deliver what your, you know, your, you know, your community group did. Some had great success, some didn't. But the message that I heard as CEO was, Tim, we, we, you know, we're already on boards. We do a lot already in the community to even be considered for leadership greater Washington. And so then that's when the idea came up to, well, how do we break it down in a way that, that makes sense? And so that was kind of an evolution. Um, and, and again, great feedback from folks. I think that we really tried to be listening to, our, to what members said and, 
and sometimes they didn't like things. Um, and we listened to them and shifted and then brought on something that again, to this day, I love that you're doing the cross, the cross pollination of classes. Um, really that's, again, you've got this common link and common language, whether you're in the first class or the last class or any class in between. And that's some of the magic that happens when, when you run into an LGW person out and about, you immediately have this connection because you know what they've gone through, um, the experiences that they've had as part of this organization, which is unlike any other place. There's, it's a great connection, you're right. And, and uh, you know, you wish that we had an app where you could, when you're at a big event, when we get back to that, that you could just say, okay, here's where the LGW people are in the, in the room. But, uh, right, right, right. Well, you, you know the same thing that we say, uh, LG, LGW is everywhere. LGW members yep. are everywhere. Yep. And it, it, is, it is so very true, <laughs> it's so very true. So Tim, we're, we're uh, just about ready to wrap up here. I, I wanna uh, ask uh, any, what I, one of the things I loved about what you talked about was that you said you're getting a lot of business from LGW members. And what struck me was, you know, we're, we're sort of very careful about that during the class, you have the no solicitation rule and all that. But what happens if, if someone comes into it and is looking for business, they just sort of get shunned and pushed off. It's right. the business right. will come through the connections, through the relationships. It's not, yes. if you go looking for it, it's not gonna work. Absolutely. But it is something like Linda just calling you out of the blue saying, hey, can you handle this person for me? I can't do it, so. Right, right, right. Yeah, well, yeah yes, you make connections, but it's not, it's, it's like, I think the phrase that we use, it's networking with the purpose. It's a deeper, if you're coming in to build your, you know, the old days, the Rolodex, as we used to call them, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. or just to make just to, to make business connections, you're not going to, LGW is not going to work for you. Um, uh, the, the ideal member, as you know, Doug, is someone already, they already have those connections. And this is how can they contribute to the community in a bigger, broader way? How can they grow and learn uh, as a leader and connect with people that they would never encounter? Um, and, and then the, the, if the business happens, that's kind of the icing on the cake. But yeah, for folks to go in and, or, or a business might say, well, what, you know, my business is going to pay for this. How am I going to get the, you know, what's my return on investment? I expect to see these connections. LGWs, LGW is not the place for you. It's not, but what's funny is you will get those Absolutely. returns if you, if you do it right. And, and Absolutely. The, Absolutely. Yeah, and what happened, the people who come into it with that, uh, really, they just go through the year and then they're gone. You never see them again. Because it, right. it didn't, it didn't work. For them, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I I agree. I, and what I love is that is that when I think about some of the people we've mentioned, they they've been involved from their first class experience and continue to be involved because I, I think they see LGW. It's it's a it, it, we're changing the region. We're a catalyst for all these amazing things that are happening, whether it's directly or indirectly. And to me, that's that's what's so extraordinary about about this thing called LGW. So before we before I give you the final word, um, what's the uh, website again for your venture with Jeff Franco? Let's put in a plug for that since we're talking about not looking for business. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, well, it's uh, it's you can find it on my website. My website's you know uh, kindleadership.com, and there's a link to that. It's called the Transformation Leadership Institute. Institute. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Doug. I, I, I'm, I, I, you know, I, I am grateful for that, um, and understand that you know LGW is is uh, truly um, the gift that keeps giving in so so many ways. So many. So, ways. what's your favorite LGW memory? Oh my gosh, I know there's Doug. a ton of them, but something I, that. Well, well, uh, uh, this. So when I went through um, with leading the class of 2014. Um, my final class, what we did, at the, the closing retreat, one of the exercises was you had to um, describe yourself in five words. And what I came up with, luckiest man in the world. That was how I, I, I could feel the emotion right now. Jeez, it was such a powerful experience that, that even though I knew um, the different, a different chapter was unfolding, that's how I felt day one to lead this organization, I have felt like the luckiest man in the world. And I feel that to this day as a direct result of, of what happened uh, during my leadership at, at Leadership Greater Washington. 
That's hilarious because at my closing retreat, we did the same thing, five words. And mine was thrilled I took this job. <laughs> That's hilarious, Tim. That's great. Of course. I love it. I love it, Doug. I love it. You can't make that stuff up. That's great. That's great, Doug. So Danny has put up a, a survey uh, for an evaluation for this chat that Tim and I have had on the, on the chat room. Uh, so please fill that out for us. I want to thank PNC Bank for being a sponsor of these Frontline Conversations. They have been a wonderful partner throughout the years. And Sonia McCormick, we miss you. Uh, and Tim, I will give you the final word. Just, I, I just would say grateful, Doug. Uh, I'm just grateful for the chance to be with you today. Uh, just grateful for my lifelong connection as a, a lifetime member of LGW. And just grateful for all the people that had supported me then and support me now that that came as a catalyst from leadership greater washington so my my word to is is grateful doug that's great tim thank you very much thanks for the conversation thanks for all your 15 years of work for leadership greater washington was celebrating the 30th anniversary this year because of your 15 years and what you did uh so we look forward to seeing you soon amen thanks, doug. Tim. everybody have a great day thank you <laughs>